So what's interesting about Medigap is that all plans are standardized, meaning that a plan offered by different private insurers uh, is virtually the same product with uh, the identical coverage. And despite all being homogeneous products, we see huge price variation in Medigap plans in the same market. So that basically means uh, seniors, they could pay very different prices for the exactly same Apple, depending on which private insurer that you purchase this product from. So that sort of motivates our study. And what we're trying to do in this paper is to understand what determines uh, the observed price dispersion in the data and how to understand firms' pricing strategies and what will happen if, say for example, we eliminate search frictions, what will happen to firms' pricing strategies, and et cetera. And in terms of policy implication, what we found is interesting. So I have to talk about the results a little bit. We found that search costs are large in Medigap insurance market, and we also found very interestingly, if we eliminate search costs, meaning that we provide all the pricing information to consumers and allow them to make their choices by looking at these price menus, what will happen? And we found that actually insurers lower their price by as much as 5%. And also we found consumer surplus goes up by as much as uh, $300 or something like that. So this has huge policy implication in terms of for the government regulators, they can think about a way or take some actions to encourage insurers, those private insurance companies, to you know, freely uh, provide those pricing information to consumers. That will lead to an increase in consumer uh, surplus and if, you know, I don't know, maybe the, gov the, the, the government also can set up a website and to force uh, those insurers to offer those pricing information, then consumers have a central way to get all the information and make better decisions. And this is good because, you know, you can think of, because now that will eliminate search costs that will lead to reductions in prices and that will also lead to expansions in market share. So that will be huge increase in terms of the uh, consumer surplus. Our data comes from two sources. The first one is coming from the um, NAIC, the National Association of uh, Insurance Commissioners. And that provides data about market shares for all the plans covered uh, by all the insurers in all the markets in the U.S. And that data also provides us information about uh, cost of insuring different markets, for example, the total claims and etc. The second source of the data comes from the Waste Ratings. It's a private company that conducted surveys to collect information about premiums that each insurer charged to each plan in each market. So now we merge sort of these two data sets together to get information about all the uh, market shares, all the price information for all the plans offered by all the companies in all the markets in the US. The model we, we, we estimate in the end is, is uh, essentially a, a login model of demand with this, this optimal search part uh, added to it. Uh, and and in, in terms of techniques, so the, we estimate the model using a constraint uh, two states least squares. Um, constrained because uh, the model is constrained by the economic theory. So the economic theory uh, puts constraints on the data and so it's important to take that into account when estimating the model. Two states least squares because we uh, do take into account that prices might be endogenous. So firms that's, uh, that set a higher price m might do so because of uh, they offer more service. And some of the service related elements are observed, but not all of them. So, so, um, so that kind of creates an energy problem between the prices and the, uh, the residuals in the, in the model. So it's important to take that into account. 